I think that people gravitate to what I'm about to talk about because they think that that's the only thing that could fit into their budget or they want to get into something for that high risk, but also hoping for that high reward. All the time. But you have to be careful with that. Yeah. And, you know, as I, as I mentioned to you, I think I'm a rather conservative with what I'm doing, but I am seeing results mm -hmm. and that's what matters. Hey, what's going on, everyone? Hope you guys are super excited about today's special guest, all right? Listen, I know we are wrapping up the final quarter or going into the final quarter of the year. And listen, I know you guys are inches away from your financial goals, but to help us get there, I'm, I wanted you all to get some great financial advice just from someone who's living the same journey as you all. But not only that, she's most definitely got a lot of things in place. She's well into the 800s. And listen, she's most definitely going to be dropping some gems along the way. But either way, I want to introduce you all to Miss Lisa Stocks. Okay, so Lisa, are you there with us today? Yes, I am. And thank you so much for having me on today. Absolutely. Absolutely. Listen, I have uh, ran across uh, some of your content and I'm like, listen, people need to hear this, especially in today's time. The way people are spending their money, the way that people are just doing things financially. And if they could just hear certain stories or certain advice, sometimes it's delivery. And I love how you deliver the information that you've been giving uh, lately uh, within your channels and such. Okay, I appreciate that. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. All right, so here, let's jump right into it because my audience, they like to get right into the information. So one of the things I wanted to talk to the audience about today was essentially some financial advice that you could give and how people should a move when they're trying to compare themselves to others and things of that sort, because I know you've been well in your journey into the 800s, but just give us a little bit of, of, of some advice on that. Well, you know, I think the big picture is looking poor can make you rich. Don't worry about what other people can see because it means nothing if you don't know the full story and the background behind it. And mm -hmm. I think you saw some of my content that was in inspired by Eric Thomas and something that I had read from him that says the goal is to win and not look like we're winning. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us look like we're winning, but we are really failing financially when it comes to, you know, everything with the car payments and our, our, our mortgage rates and, and, you know, we're just drowning in debt, but people see the outward appearance and think that person is doing better than the person that's, you know, driving the modest car and living in yeah. the modest home. We can't see their 401k. We can't see, you know, all, all the, the details of what their life, their financial life entails. Absolutely. And you know what? You hit on something big. You said we can't see the 401k. We can't see their investments. Mm -hmm. But let, let me ask you this. Why do you think people do that? Why do you think people kind of compare themselves to the visual items in a sense? Why do you think that is? Because, I mean, we, we want the car. We want the car. We want the vacations. We want, you know, the, the clothes and the handbags. But can we afford to have them? Mm -hmm. And we can't look at someone who has those those superficial, those superficial things, yeah. the outward things. Yeah. But, you know, the, you have to think about what really matters. For me, that doesn't matter. I wouldn't be proud to have my daughter with, you know, all these, a whole closet full of sneakers and an yeah. iPhone and all these different things. But does she have, does she have a 529 plan? Is she going to be in debt? You know, right. the, you know, those type of things Does she have financial knowledge that she can yeah. bring into adulthood. Right. So that's, what's more important to me. And yeah, my daughter does have an iPhone, but she also every yeah. on a monthly basis, she's building into her investment accounts, including Apple stock. Mm. Real quick, if you haven't done so already, be sure to download our free ebook. You can actually scan this QR code or you can click the link in the description below. Now back to the video. Wow. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. Now, how are kids able or how are you able to kind of set that up for your children to be able to invest in, let's say, Apple stock or any stock for that matter? Well, my daughter doesn't have earned income yet. Okay. And I, I decided this is the route that I chose. A okay. 529 plan is tied to education expenses. Okay. So I didn't think that that was the right fit for, for me. But if yeah. you feel that you definitely want that for your child to, mm -hmm. you know, for it to be for college and room and board and things like that, you yeah. can explore a 529 plan. 
If gotcha. not, you can inf- you could check out a, a UTMA or a UGMA account, mm-hmm. and you will be the custodian of that until your child becomes of age in your particular state. Mm-hmm. So that's okay. the route I took. She has right now, she has a UTMA account, and she also has Fidelity Youth yeah. accounts through that she uh that's for age 13 to 17 yeah. and with that she gets a debit card wow. she can invest and and also that's where her money can is kind of held in savings at a good rate of i believe 4.97 percent you know hold up <laughs> we moving kind of quick now lisa I, i'm okay. we're gonna have to roll this back a bit and, okay. and no this is phenomenal <laughs> information because listen let us know inside the comment section right now if you all didn't know about this stuff if you knew about this stuff, how far along you are with these types of accounts. But Lisa, how did you find out about these types? You said it's a UTMA. Do you know what that, and if it's okay, do you know what that stands for? And it's okay if you don't. Uniform Transfers to Minor Act. Wow. Okay. And you say that's between 13 and 17, correct? No, no, no. The Fidelity Youth account is for for age uh, 13 to 17. That's when they're actually going to have the app on the phone and you're working with them, supervising them. But the UTMA account, I think you can get that set up. Once you have their social security number, you can be doing that from, you know, as soon as you have their their birth certificate, social security, you can set that up. So from when they are a baby, we can get them started having an investment account. See. This is why we had to have this conversation today because it's so many people. We're not going to go into race and all that, but listen, we know a, a lot of our people just don't know about these things. And but we're in a time where the books are there, the videos are there, the mm-hmm. the information's out there, but people don't know who to trust. And that's why when I saw your content, I was like, okay, she clearly knows what she's talking about, but not just knowing what you're talking about, you are. Le- not just, I mean, you're learning by experience on your own. Like you're doing what you're talking about, you know, as well. I think that we could end the video right there. That right there was enough gems for a lot of people that have kids <laughs> uh, for sure. So, okay. Now, what made you want to do that or set that up for your daughter? Because I mean, I was in a place I had been laid off twice. Mm. I, you know, going through what we went through with the pandemic and I was, I, you know, our life, the world was changing and I was scared and I just didn't know. Uh, I was so many things. I was going through so many emotions. And part of that was I didn't want to be working a nine to five for the rest of my life. I wanted to make sure I was creating multiple streams of income, just making my, uh, you know, finances as strong as possible. So I know that I can rely on myself and not have to be tied to corporate America until I'm 70 years old. Mm. So with that, I was making sure that I was getting my money working for me in every way possible. And I had to do the same for her and pull her along with me on this journey. And, you know, I had, like I said, I had gotten laid off twice and I had started with a new company around that time. And with that, I did receive money, um, stimulus money. Mm -hmm. And I had, you know, and she had other savings that was sitting at at the local bank. And I said, no, 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 I'm doing, I'm investing, I'm making sure to prioritize my investing. I have to figure, I have to figure this out because her money has to be working as hard as I'm making mine. So I, I, that's when I set up her um, UTMA account at that time, she wasn't in that 13 to 17 range. Okay. Um, But you know, a few years later when she was, that's when we set up the Fidelity youth account. We set up her savings account at over at discover bank is the, 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 my online bank that I chose. And we also opened up a CD for her over there that had a higher rate than her savings. But I wanted her to know, okay, we have, all the money doesn't have to be tied up into investments and into the CD. We're also going to have savings. Just everything that I was doing for myself, I basically did it for her. Yeah. I love how you just mentioned that as well, too. You said, I want her money to be working for her just as hard as yours is working for you. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's crucial. I think a lot of times we don't put a lot of these things in place. We think about the now. We think about prom. We think about graduation Mm -hmm, (laughs) mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and, you know, and that's about it. And don't get me wrong. A lot of it is not knowing because we don't know what we don't know, you know, Uh, but it's finding the right people to get that information from. Listen, guys, I know you all are just now watching this, but I'm telling you, 
Lisa knows her stuff, okay? She has well over 528 videos, and that's just on YouTube. She loves giving this information out. But listen, we got her today, okay? We got her today. Make sure you guys go ahead and check out her YouTube channel as well. Now, obviously, I, and of course, we know that you have, you know, just personal experience from your own, uh, you know, your personal finance and things of that sort. I wanted to go uh, you know, into another segment of this because a lot of people are talking about, they're always talking about stocks and things of that sort. But there are some stocks that you said that I thought were like pretty popular or at least not necessarily the stocks themselves, but the strategy itself. But these companies, some companies in particular that you were essentially saying, listen, I'm these are three things I am not going to invest my money in. Could you tell us what those three things are? And why you think that is? Why you make? Why are you making that decision? Okay. Be, well, first, let me say that I think that people gravitate to what I'm about to talk about because they think that that's the only thing that could fit into their budget, mm. or they want to get into something for that high risk, but also hoping for that high reward. All the time. But you have to be careful with that. Yeah. And you know, as I, as I mentioned to you, I think I'm a rather conservative with what I'm doing, but mm. I am seeing results. And that's what matters. I like a balance between both. But right. what I was trying to highlight to people was penny stocks, which mm. are stocks, you know, investments that have a stock price of five dollars or less. Yeah. So, you know, because of the price, you think, oh, I can buy a bunch of this. And oh, what mm. if it goes up or, you know, but like I pointed out with all of these risk, yeah. volatility, you know, is it stable? And yeah. for me, what I would suggest, I'll, I'll run through all three. So the yeah. first one is penny stocks. Okay. Another is IPOs, which mm. initial public offering, yeah. something yeah. that is just new to just putting out their shares for the first time ever. Mm. And then the other one is crypto. Yeah. And I, when I say crypto, I especially mean those obscure coins that you are mm. not familiar with. You have no idea what the use case is. Mm. Not the big ones, not Ethereum, not Bitcoin, mm. but something else that people might hear about and want to chase and, and make that quick money and yeah. don't know how to navigate that type of trade. Mm. But they heard something from someone and just yeah. said, oh, let me <laughs> let me give this a shot. Yeah. But with all of those things, Instead of doing, you know, instead of chasing those things, why not just dollar cost average? You don't have to buy a mm. full share of of Apple stock or Nvidia or an ETF like VTI that gives you mm. exposure to the entire U.S. stock market. Mm. If you have to go at it ten dollars or twenty dollars at a time, I personally would rather do that than to be putting my money into something that is so speculative that we have that has no proven track record that we don't have years of data to look back on right. i'll just stick with investing into google and mm. you know and like i said if you don't even want to pick individual stocks there are index funds exchange traded funds things like that baskets of stock that give you exposure to those quality companies and mm. you don't have to have a lot of money to get started. Many of the platforms that I use allow you to buy fractional shares starting at five dollars. Wow. Wow. OK, fractional shares. You know, I've heard a few people talk about this, uh, but like you said, a lot of people kind of go with what's most popular and is not a ton of companies just with regular price, you know, nowhere near five dollars. But to be able to buy fractions or portions of and it's really about having the right strategy not just going with something just because everybody else is talking about it the 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 real deal the those yeah. high quality stocks and you know i when i first started investing in, even into like amazon and google yeah. tesla they they were all very high priced uh, i think when i first started investing into amazon it might have been three thousand dollars a share yeah. Um, before the stock split, because it's been a few years that I've been building out certain positions in my portfolio. Tesla a few years ago was twelve hundred dollars a share. Mm -hmm. I didn't have um, uh, enough funds to jump in day one and be like, I'm going to buy a full share of this and that. Yeah. But what I did was I stay consistent with yeah. whatever dollar amount I could. Mm -hmm. And now I have multiple shares of, you know, I have over 50 shares of Apple. I have, you know, significant amounts of Google, Tesla, NVIDIA. But 
it didn't happen overnight, but I just yeah. stay consistent with whatever amount. And I'm telling you, you know, and this is, these are investments that I'm talking about right now that are yeah. in addition to my 401k. Right. And I'm so glad you touched on that because, you know, with what you just mentioned, a lot of people don't necessarily have to have a trip, a tremendous amount of money to go into investing. And, mm -hmm. you know, like when you mentioned that you can get fractional shares and things of that sort, and you still, and you are contributing to a 401k. And I'm sure a lot of people watching this right now, of course, um, they have a 401k, maybe through their job or something like that. And, you know, so you still do have that and you still invest in that, correct? Yes. Yes. I okay. do that. That comes right out of my paycheck, but I, yeah. I, I know I wanted additional investments and also okay. I wanted to, to invest with my daughter. So usually her investments are only, um, $50 at a time. We, yeah. we do her investments, fractional shares yeah. into yeah. an ETF and then a few um, blue chip stocks yeah. that, yeah. you know, we've chosen together. One of them I already mentioned, her Apple stock. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, sometimes it might only be $10 yeah. into, wow. you know, one of her individual stocks, but that's okay. Absolutely. Because over time, you know, her, her portfolio is growing. Yeah. Especially at a young age, too. And like you listen, you are leading by example, Lisa. Okay. So <laughs> these are things that some people just talk about, or a lot of people don't even know this type of stuff. So listen, let us know inside the comments if you guys knew about this stuff already. If you all are doing it, how things are going for you, let us know inside the comment section below. And as I mentioned, listen, Lisa talks about this stuff all the time on her YouTube channel. So make sure you guys go ahead and stop by her channel if this is something you want to learn more about okay and then lisa i did want to touch on another thing is you're not just learning a lot about stocks and sharing your personal journey along the way but listen you've been on top of your credit <laughs> as well could you kind of walk us through your credit journey or any stories that made you say you know what i'm going to make sure that i'm never here again i'm going to be on top of my credit Had that has that ever happened to you in the past or has everything always been uh, you know, towards that 800. No, I, I think there was definitely a time frame when I wasn't even looking and trying to figure out the, the credit score. Yeah. And, you know, I was a teenage mom. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know, I, I, it took me until I was nearly 30 years old to graduate from college. Mm -hmm. I always throw that part of the story in because yeah. throughout my 20s, I was kind of, um, uh, you know, underemployed. Yeah, I was yeah. working, going to school, but I w my earnings weren't much. And yeah, so yeah. because of that, and without having that emergency fund yeah. and pretty much living paycheck to paycheck during that time frame and taking care of my daughter, mm -hmm. um, what happens? You run into debt. Yeah. On the basics, you know, just car repairs, mm -hmm. clothes, groceries, whatever it is that you might need, you yeah. may not be able to put it on your card and pay it off completely. Mm -hmm. So, yes, I, I accumulated a lot of debt um, during that time frame and then was had to work for years mm -hmm. to to clean it up. But I, I, I have gotten a hold of it now. And yeah. really, the only debt that I have to speak of is mortgage. Mm -hmm. I use credit cards. I am definitely a credit card person. I use credit cards for everything that I can. Yeah. But what I do is I'm constantly paying it off. And I have uh, substantial savings because even if it is something as large as, you know, a roof repair or something like that, yeah. I'm going to I'm going to tap into the credit and then I'm going to pay it off immediately. And then Absolutely. if I need to then replenish the the savings, yeah. that's that's going to be the focus after that because I just don't want that cycle of carrying that high interest debt. Yeah. Now, you know, and I also do, you know, if I have the opportunity, I will take advantage of 18 months or 24 months interest free as mm -hmm. opposed to spending my cash because I'd rather have my cash sitting in my high yield savings account or, you know, able for me to invest with and then no, yeah. you know, with the plan of I know when my end date is and I have to get this credit, this my credit card cleaned up by this particular date. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. You know what? That that leads us into our next people. Before we go that far into it, I love how you just being just so transparent because I know that there's a lot of people that's probably watching this right now that may be in that situation that you were in in the past and they see themselves in you or they see themselves in your story and it's not too late. For those of you all who are watching this, you can most definitely learn the information, apply the information 
and keep following people like Lisa and I to get you on track. Uh, but like you said, and I think I think it's safe to say a lot of people are in their twenties. Um, it's rare that I run across people that uh, were in their twenties and they didn't make those mistakes. They didn't know how serious things were. They didn't know what you know, if they should have a strategy, you know, in place. And I think that that's that's huge. But you know, I do want to go back to something. Okay. You mentioned about paying off your credit cards. You had a pretty good strategy that you do with paying off your credit cards. And could you talk more a, a little bit about that? Well, okay. This is for right now. I pretty much like I have different accounts. I have Bank of America, Citibank, Chase. Some of them, the the uh, charges hit the account very quickly. Bank of America is pretty much immediate. Mm -hmm. So if if my charge hits my card immediately, yeah. I might be paying it every, and they don't have any limitations on me on how often yeah. I can make payments to the card, which some yeah. of the, uh, my cards also have that, like mm -hmm. Citibank. So uh, Citibank, I would say I pay it weekly. Other wow. other accounts, I might pay it as I go. If I go to the gas station and grocery store today, I might pay the card today. Yeah, that's wow. how on top of uh, on, on payments I am. But for those of you that are strategically trying to, you know, increase your credit score, yeah. I have these two tips: fifteen days before your statement date. Make mm. sure that you are getting a payment in as much as possible if you can clear off the count by then, that would be great. But another time frame is about three days before the due date to make sure to get the payment in, not being on top of the due date because we don't want anything to carry over. And we have to kind of be in tune. If, if you are really trying to work to get that credit score up, all of these little things are going to matter because we need to get those payments in before they report the credit bureaus. Yeah. And so those are just things that if you are, you know, in that place where we are trying to improve month by month, yeah. you have to take the time to do that extra work. But for me right now, I'm telling you, I'm just constantly paying it. And for me, it makes it, it easier because if I was to wait two weeks in order to pay my credit card, <laughs> yeah. I know I'm going to be, you know, between groceries and gas and medical yeah. bills and, and just little things that come up. Yeah. You sometimes I'm kind of like, oh, you know, a little surprised, yeah. mm -hmm. but you know, that's why you have to keep up with your budget and keep up with paying your bills um, so that you're not surprised and you're able to make sure to face those payments and face the, 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 the balances in full, if that's your goal. And I know that's my goal right now. Absolutely. You know, and you know, honestly, it's just getting things out the way. I heard, you know, you mentioned that sometimes, you know, you'll get the gas, you'll get the groceries and those types, some of those expenses are weekly, I'm sure, you know, mm -hmm. especially with groceries. I know in my house, nothing lasts. So, <laughs> but saying that to say, if we do use our credit cards to, you know, if you can get it out the way, just pay it the same day or, or try to do it within that same week. Cause I'm glad you touched on that because there are some times where two weeks from now, four weeks from now, you know, it's a different ball game. You don't know how the money's going to you know, move sometimes. Emergencies come up. Things happen. Mm -hmm. And it's just best to just get it out the way um, early on. And I know that you've you know, spent a little bit of time uh, building. You've also uh, worked on building your business credit a little bit, too. Is that correct? Yes. A few years ago, you know, I created an LLC and I, I got started with uh, trying to open up business lines of credit. So yeah. I went to, you know, the Home Depot, Best Buy. Um, I, I picked I got a few major credit cards and it, it was not as hard as I as I thought, you know, mm -hmm. and yeah. I'm, I'm glad that uh, you know, you just have to get out there and do these things. I didn't go yeah. to any agency or anything. Mm -hmm. I, I just went to YouTube University That's and right. looked up my information for my state. And I, you know, I, I just took my time in, in creating my uh, my LLC and yeah. Yeah. and going through those steps of getting an understanding and, you know, the Dun and, and Bradstreet and, yeah. you know, just making those steps in order to be ready. And and I was able to secure a few major credit cards. And, and as I mentioned, you know, a few store cards because I am in real estate. So okay. I wanted to, you know, build something there in case I need to go get appliances and and things like that. As, but of course, Home Depot and Lowe's mm -hmm. for different things related to to the properties. Wow. Listen, Lisa out here doing everything. OK, so <laughs> we're talking, making sure that you have a portfolio for yourself and your family, making sure that your daughter has uh, a portfolio that's building, 
you're dabbling into real estate, having your mm -hmm. personal credit on point. Listen, I, I tell you guys this, we only bring you all the best people that are on this platform, okay? People that are actually doing what they are telling you that they are doing. So they're speaking from experience, not speaking from theory. So we can, man, we got to appreciate that. So make sure you guys go ahead and check out her channel as well. Now, before we wrap up, I know it will be here sooner than we think, but I wanted to touch on one last thing because I know tax season is going to be coming up. You did an amazing, amazing video where you talked about things that essentially we should be doing with our tax refund and being open to, if not investing all of it, but just not just blowing it, but at least investing some of that tax return into ourselves or in just into a portfolio. Could you touch on that a little bit? Okay. So whatever stage you're at, which, you know, I, I was glad to, to be able to partner with you and come on your show today, because I think having an emergency fund, saving, budgeting, mm. credit, it all goes together before you can even get to the stage of mm. really putting the work in and investing, which yeah. is my main, you know, what I really share the most on. But when it comes to getting tax refunds, many people are still getting substantial refunds. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. that's up to you to figure out what 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 you need to do to adjust that so that maybe you're not getting such a large refund. I yeah. I want to strive to to not give the government any free loans and hopefully right. <laughs> be as close to uh, you know, a clean wash with them as possible, but yeah. if you are in that boat where you're getting a substantial refund, just, you know, see where you're at financially. Do you yeah. have an emergency fund? Mm -hmm. Do you Are you carrying high interest debt? Try to use it and prioritize getting a clean start from it in order to get yourself on track. Because yeah. if you just spend it, like, you know, wh what is that going to do for you in the, in the long run? You know, I'm trying yeah. to make my financial, uh, current financial situation as, as, as strong as possible, as well as take care of my older self. So, you know, these are priorities to me. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you know, what's crazy, Lisa, is that sometimes people feel like this is almost the boring side of money. You know, a lot of people don't talk about savings and, you know, emergency funds. And, and it's like, but surprisingly, people touch thousands of dollars. We've People have touched hundreds of thousands of dollars if they've just been working, you know, for 10, 15 years. And but then you they look at how much they have saved or don't have saved. And, you know, we're not harping on anybody. But listen, guys, we're, we're adults now. So, you know, we have to be on ourselves. And it's just about being responsible. But like Lisa said earlier, is that it's OK to be conservative. Right. It's OK to be conservative on certain things, you know, for sure. Listen, let us know inside the comment section below if you all want us to bring Lisa back. OK. Um, I know many of you all most definitely want to go into investing and things of that sort. And it's not just stocks, but it's just looking at things a, a different way. At least take the first step. I think a lot of times people think about a goal and they'll say that and then they'll look at that goal almost like a staircase. And then it may seem like it's impossible. But in reality, it's not the staircase. It's really just that first step. And that first step is just learning the information and finding the right people to get that that information from. And so, Lisa, listen, but I know you got to run. But is there are there any last like either personal credit tips or financial tips, you know, or any last remarks that you want to leave before we get out of here? Today? Well, I just want everyone to know whether it comes to, you know, investing or budgeting, figuring out your credit, how to repair it. It's not hard. Just like you were just saying, just take the first step. I'm here to support you. Channels like yours are here to support you and we can get through it, but just don't turn a blind eye to it because the 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 result is what matters and if we don't take that first step then we will never be financially free and that is what i'm striving to for myself and hopefully to bring lots of other people along with me on this journey that's right well listen we are most definitely going to be with you along the journey for sure listen like i told you guys it's right there on your screen if you all want to learn more about what lisa talks about stocks is her forte okay I know, again, many, many of the people in the audience, you guys are entry level learners when it comes to that. We didn't, we didn't want to spend too much time on that, but that is where her wheelhouse is. And of course, 
listen, she most definitely could drop these gems easily on personal finance, especially with her being in the upper 800s with her credit score as well. So thank you so much, Lisa, for taking out your time away from your business, your family to go ahead and give us the information today. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me on.